All right, looks like the meeting is being recorded. This is the leadership uh, committee. It is 7.07 p.m. on uh, Thursday, February 18th. We do have a quorum. And with all that being said, we will go to the agenda. The first item on the agenda we'll skip for now, which is the review of the meeting minutes of last month. Uh, so while we look for those, Jeremy, if you can pull up the agenda for this month's meeting. Oh. Well, first reminder is Wednesday is our meeting. Everybody can see this? Yep. So the first thing is our meeting is on Wednesday, not a Thursday, next week. Are we going to meet via WebEx or are we going to meet via Office Suite? Whatever we used last month. Well, tonight we're using a different different platform than last month. That's what I'm asking. Whatever it is, we just want to stay consistent with it. To me, I can't tell the difference between WebEx and whatever the other one is. Okay. I mean, there, there are different pros and cons for each one. So, if, Jeremy, which, which one allows more people? Uh, WebEx allows up to a thousand people. Maybe for the, gen for the general meeting, we could have the one that allows more just in case for some odd reason, many people show up. This suite, we are limited to a hundred. But when when do we have any issues with WebEx? Some people were, but did anybody have an issue tonight? Jeremy, just uh, pick one and um, whichever one you, that you see people have less issues with it, let's just go with it. Because honestly, it's uh, transparent to most of us. Tonight it's going smooth between this is my second meeting. I had no issues. Give it out to me. I just picked for you. So it'll be WebEx. If anybody has a problem, you know, the drill, reach out to me and we'll try to work it out. Um, that aside, saying do we want them? Yes, Jeremy, because the crime is going rampantly up and they haven't been attending. I mean, we definitely should have some presentation to know what in the world is going on. Brock uh, or Yahe, did they come to your committee meeting? Uh, community officer James Graham was at the public safety meeting this month. I just want to the, uh, somebody from the precinct pump every month um, to the public safety meeting, whether it's an NCO or the captain or the community officer, okay. we're going to try and always have somebody there. So you can always join the public safety meeting if you have any questions for them. And that meeting was recorded, right? So I can put it up online if anybody wants to see that. But, but my question is, even if the captain can make it, are you are they telling us one subordinate there? You broke up on me, Fran. Can you say that again? I said that even if the captain cannot be there, there's plenty of sergeants and lieutenants that could represent the precinct. Why can't at least one the representative be there every month? I mean, there's been months since no representation. Yeah, Frano, good good point. We talked about it last month and we were debating on how to go about it. And that uh, we decided that they would they would give the crime stats during the public safety committee meeting and they would attend our general meeting to answer any questions. So we were trying to reduce the time of our meetings. And we thought if they didn't, you know, spend five or 10 minutes given the crime stats during the general meeting, but they were still there to answer questions, it would be helpful. I think that that's what we came to the conclusion. 
Well, that, so that sounds reasonable uh, and wonderful, but at least somebody should be there regardless of who it is. I appreciate the captain not being able to be there because God knows his, hand, his or her hands are full. Somebody should be there. Yeah, so uh, Jeremy, just tell them they, uh, to plan to be there. Um, they don't have to give us the crime stats. Uh, we prefer the crime stats during the public safety committee meeting. And if they give it to us during the public safety committee meeting, and they gave us a uh, digital version of it, maybe along with the minutes, we can attach that uh, to the minutes. Does that sound okay with everybody? The crime stats sheets you can attach to the minutes of the public safety? Sounds wonderful. Sounds good for me. Kenny. All right, that looks uh, looks like we're good with that. Um, I didn't ask if anyone was willing to take uh, minutes for tonight's meeting. Would anyone please volunteer to take minutes since we just started? I know Veronica volunteered to do it for the executive session. Do we have anyone volunteering to do it for this uh, session for the leadership meeting? I'll take them again if you want. All right, thank you so much, Hazel. We'll make sure you don't do it next month. Okay. Um, I can't seem to find the the minutes. I know I did them and I know I sent them out, but I can't find them. We can. We can. We can always later. All right, so that was item number two. Uh, Jeremy, we're going to ask the precinct just to be present at the meeting. They don't have to give us the crime stat. Uh, I heard. Uh, I know it's thoroughly discussed at the 49th Precinct Community Council meeting. Uh, and um, for them to repeat it, you know, to sometimes just two days later. Um, I'm not sure how uh, beneficial it is. Um, I know it's two different platforms, but. If we're, if we're going to have the 49th Precinct Community Council on the 23rd and on the 24th to go over the same stats, um, a lot of the members that attend the 49th Precinct Community Council also attend the community board meeting. I'm not trying to uh, take away from the community board, uh, but I think uh, like Frano and Kenny already agreed that it's just beneficial to have the crime stats with the minutes and we'll go from there. And if anyone has anything to to point out, um, they can use next Wednesday's meeting, the general meeting as a platform to do that. So I think we're good with that. All right, uh, next on the agenda is that we have is the chairman's report, which uh, we just discussed it during the executive session. So Jeremy's going to send emails to the rest of the members that have been absent or have been consistently absent or have more than three consecutive absences or five total. Um, he's also going to send certified letters to them. We'll vote on it on Wednesday next, next week uh, because the certified letters are not going to arrive there in time to give them a warning. So we will vote on it the following month, um, which will be March sometime in March. Um, I think, Jeremy, if you can scroll down. I think the next two items are just routine. Treasurer's so, report. Bylaws, I have to edit. I did it. email Mr. Levitt. It's a really lengthy, it's, it's really lengthy. Um, actually, no, here it is. This is correct. I'm sorry. This is correct. So, does transportation or, well, this is leadership tonight. Trent, Trent Frano, did you guys vote on anything in committee this month? No, we had no activity permits or things like that. We, we just had the presentation. So I'll put you guys down here then. Um, 
keep the vote on first. So that's correct. We have two motions bylaws in regards to the motion that passed in December or was it or January? Um uh, the second vice chair. This is just to make it a little bit clearer on what the acting vice chair would do. This is what I proposed. Um for a vote now. So remember the way bylaws work is our amendments work is it's proposed one month, voted on the following month. And if there's any questions on that, these are the current proposals, as I say here, not up for a vote. It's just for notice. So I could zoom out if that helps. Or we can look at them now. I can read them out loud. It's really up to you guys, girls, ladies, men. Jeremy, we're all able to read and comprehend. And if anyone has any questions, they can then contact you. So that aside, what other committees have met? Economic development met, right? Community develop community. Um, my committee met. Is there any motions? I don't know. No. Okay, I will put it here then. And, and I gave you the men. I sent you the minutes, and I know you will receive them. Yep. Thank you. So I know some people want to know who the Yankee words we're going to. I'll get back to them on that. It's just ethics match. May I say something about the community development meeting, please? Yes. Um, we went, went over our survey and obviously very few people responded. So we had other ideas on how to get more responses. I need the, the chairs of all your committees to go go out and find out what's needed in your community. And sanitation, the fire department, the, the education. This is all, each committee has to be responsible for this. It can't all be on our hands, heads. Like nobody has ever, nobody has reached out to the, the and to the police department to see if they need anything. Nobody has reached out to any of the schools to see if they want anything. I mean, each committee should t be responsible for that. Okay. Um, I'm going to play with the the formatting. So, so. Bylaws is voting, community development, economic development, education. No, education did not meet this month. Uh, ethics, housing, public safety, transportation all met, but no voting items, I assume, right? Correct? No voting items? Well, I, I didn't have a quorum, so even if I wanted to vote on anything, I couldn't. I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, okay. Uh, gallery, I don't think I heard from the public yet. I want to speak. I don't know. We can, I guess. Uh, oh, yeah, hey, do you want, if anybody from the public that's here tonight wants to speak at an next full board meeting, if they want to give them the opportunity now to announce that, or are you going to wait for the gallery session later? Um, they can send you an email or. Okay. Um, or put yeah, in the chat. Email. Yeah, or put in the chat. They can put in the chat. Put it in the chat. Okay. This is this is from last month. This is me just updating last month still. So um elected officials have everybody can here confirmed, but Mr. Lucania or the Royal President's office. I did get notice that the investigative 
committee chairperson of the city council is coming to our meeting, or at least that's the intent. Um, I'll put her title later. Um, then old business. And how much time are you going to give her to speak? I've been giving electives 10 minutes. Um, on whose clock? <laughs> no, friend. Um, they've been they've been timing them, right? Fran? No, I think she means. I think she, I think she means ten minutes is too much. So, <laughs> you know, sometimes the ten minutes with questions. Listen, I haven't seen elect an elected official speak and not have any questions. You know, so. Uh, Maybe it should be 10 minutes with questions, you know. We maybe we can tell them that that. Uh, they have 10 minutes with questions, so they don't use the full 10 minutes. Maybe they can use half of it and allow half of it for questions. What do you think? I agree with you. So we won't pin them to 5 minutes, but we'll say, okay, you'll have 10 minutes for. Sounds like a good idea to answer questions. And if they're smart, they won't be selfish and take the 10 minutes. Kenny, you said something? Yeah, that, that sounds like a good idea to try it at least for once, at least once. So, Fran, what other, do you think? Well, the problem is that we have four questions, which a lot of times the four questions end up being six or seven because there's a follow-up question and that drags it uh we're penalizing them because we're asking questions i think this day and age we need more answers not less from our uh, elected officials that's my thought so then do you suggest they get they get five minutes to speak and then uh we don't you know pressure them on the on the uh, questions that they have to finish within 10 minutes? Sometimes five minutes are enough and a lot of times they are not some, as we know, drag it. But I have made sure that they never go beyond the 10 minutes. What we need to do is really check our questions and not have a follow-up question, which is considered part of the first question. This is where we end up ending with another 10, 15 minutes. So, yeah, hey, the current that's is we, we don't, the initial speaking time is not part of their the question part. So, exactly. So that's the current process, but, you know, versus 10 minutes, five minutes, maybe, because we generally give only the public and the elected reps uh, two minutes. So five minutes is more than double that time. I, that would be more than sufficient, no, for some of these people. Yeah, I agree. Um, I mean, last month we had um, Congresswoman AOC. That was about 10, 15 minutes. Uh, Councilman Mark Joni, about 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, State Senator uh, Rivera, that was about 25 minutes. Well, Sorry, go ahead, Frano. I said Gustavo Rivera was actually seven minutes. I remember exactly the time. Yeah, but it, it dragged because of the questions because it went, we went into COVID and the governor, and then he went off on the governor. Yes, that's true. The other thing to do, Yahe, is we generally don't limit questions for the elected. We only limit the questions for the elected reps. So maybe we should be better about stick adhering to four questions for any elected or direct. Yeah, so is everyone okay with doing five minutes for the elected official and then uh, four questions? I am, uh, Jim Thompson. Okay. That's an excellent idea. Andrea, Andrea, I think you were trying to say something. Are you okay with that? It's worth a try. Okay, Jeremy, I recommend that you advise the elected officials in advance so they don't get surprised. Yeah, no, we will definitely do that. 
we're def we will definitely reach out to them. I'll have Harriet, Chris, and me, all, all three of us will reach out to you. So there's no surprises. Okay. Um, did yeah, hey, since we're still on the full board, um, so so we have the electeds are there. How about sign ups? Can we limit when people can sign up? Because to sign up the day of the meeting, I don't think is lo no longer tenable. If anybody read my DM report, you know, I, I, if you look at another community board, they they require you sign up before the meeting, um, before the meeting even. Before, like, historically, when we met in person, people would come and sign up in person. But someone, someone like community board eight requires that you reach out to the office before the meeting, before basically the office is closed. So I don't how know many, if we can do some. How many late requests are you receiving? Well, last meeting we got we got four to five, and. And it, it, it's just too, I don't, I don't think, I think if we cut off at least my proposal is at least 31 hours in advance, like basically the, by noon, the day before. Because it's just, it's just, I think it's just too much. Because why, why do I want that time? Let me hold on, bear with me. Why do I want that time that 24 hour time? Because quite often there's a back and forth, even with electives. Even with electives, as I announced last month, you know, Vanessa Gibson's office. So, um, I, I like that time to kind of work out any, anything that maybe needs to be worked out. Right? We generally try to combine speakers. We one speaker, one topic per night versus five people speaking about the same thing, unless it's just unless the meeting is specifically about one item. Does that make sense? I'm not sure. You, that doesn't make sense, or you're not sure about the idea. Um, both. Because uh, you said the four to five that reached out to you late last month. Uh, at what point did they reach out to you? The, the was it? The I, got, I, I, got, was I got. I got an email. I got. I got an email. I don't know if not seven o'clock, a few minutes before. Like I didn't see the email to the next day. And right. that's fine. I think I think if for someone to if they if they wanted to to be there, and they're going to send the email two minutes to eight or even fifteen minutes to uh, to seven. Sorry, fifteen minutes to seven. We're usually logging in, and you're already starting to take attendance. You know, quarter two. Um, I, I don't see an issue with it, but uh, if you want to put something maybe prior to four p.m. the day of, I think. Even more, even four, even even four p.m. is problematic because you got to think about it. I'm I'm constantly in contact. If it's not you, it's Veronica about the treasurer's report about making sure the city published the minutes because I can't do it directly myself. There's a lot of there's a lot of juggling the day of the meeting that the the city the city the city I cannot I cannot upload the agenda myself. I have to send it to the city and rely on them to do it for me. And if I do it the day of, it may not even get uploaded, which has happened. Jeremy, Community Board 10 has on their calendar that anybody that needs to speak at any meeting has to submit two days, two full days prior to the meetings. Okay. But I think we're talking just about elected officials, right, Jeremy? I, 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 I'm talking about both. Why, why should we just penalize the public? Which is, I don't know if that's what board 10 does, but I know board eight strictly focuses on the public. They get, they only allow five speakers a night. This is prior to COVID, not just currently. It's in their bylaws. Five speakers a night, three minutes, that's it. Board members cannot make statements. Is also in their bylaws. and no longer than a half an hour for the gallery. But why just the gallery? Because if you look at this agenda here, 
the problem the gallery so much as all, all these people. I mean, not saying that, I'm not saying, you know, maybe they have, you know, they're good people, they have good things to say, but it's very time consuming. Well, we're looking for ways to be efficient and keep it as informative as possible. So that's why we're having this dialogue. Um, I'm thinking if, if if we have a an elected official that's coming in with official business and they notify you the day of, I don't see an issue with approving it. But uh, if it's a member of the public, they've had the issue, they, they intend to mention it. Uh, maybe a 24 hour notice is appropriate, or like you said, uh, what Debbie said, 48 hours, whatever we come up with, I think it's fine. But uh, with the elected officials, I can see them probably saying, I might be able to attend the meeting. Let me see the day of, I was able to juggle and move a few things around. And if they notify you at 4 p.m. and you need to go back and forth with them, just uh, see if you can assign it to Chris or Harriet so, so they can take that task and you can uh, do other things. Yeah, I mean, I, I I agree with you in some ways about the elected themselves. Like last month, I think the day of the meeting or the day before, Senator Schumer's office reached out to me. And, you know, how often are you going to get a U.S. Senator at a community board meeting? Um, at least for our community board meetings. So I think, yeah, maybe some exception should be taken for an instance like that. Um, but again, in many, you know, for the, the other things, the other people, in some ways it's about making sure it's on the agenda, which is on the website, at least the day before. So nobody can come to the meeting, be surprised. Oh, I didn't know they were going to come. I don't know if this was going to be spoken about or, you know, you know what I mean? I try. I want to try to be as transparent as possible and give people enough notice as possible. But it doesn't matter what they speak about. We, we're all surprised because we find out that day anyway. Um, for for most of us, when we check the the agenda. Yeah, no. I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to surprise it. That's all. Surprises. You know, our, meeting, our meetings are much too long, and if we can cut down on some of the time that we use. Um, that we don't need to. So we definitely should not have people coming in on the last minute to, to speak. Uh, if it's on our calendar and we timed it properly and we all have time for questions, a certain amount of time for questions, then we can have an efficient running bus board. If not, we can drag that on uh, for four hours, which is much too much time. Yeah, I agree, uh, Joe. So, if we if, do, we have to put it in the bylaws. If we say we put a, a time limit of thirty six hours, we have to notify us thirty six hours prior to the meeting. And if ex if you can make exceptions, if time permits you to make exceptions, Jeremy, you make exceptions. Do we have to put that in the bylaws, or can we just state it and we just go with it? We can, for now, we can state it and go with it. Um, ideally, it will become the part of the bylaws, though, um, especially if it works out, because it's easy to slide backward and forget exactly what we're supposed to be doing. But if it's in the bylaws, it's there, it's it's in black and white. And I, I want to reiterate what Board 8 does. As far as I recall, they don't allow statements, whereas we we allow questions or statements. We should only have really questions for these people, shouldn't we? Yeah, that's fine. And we'll take some good things from community board eight. We'll take some great things from community board 12. Um, we don't have to take everything. I think not having statements or questions is, is a very bad. Um, we don't have to take the bad. So. Which is five minutes for the official. Just go on for 10, 15 minutes. It is what it is. And the second You're thing is up, that yeah. the, the. Yeah, let me get. Go back. Hold on. Uh, five, the five minutes for the elected officials and the four questions. The second thing is 36 hours in advance. Uh, the community board has to receive um, advance notice of someone speaking at the gallery session. Does that sound good? So, so sounds great. I'm sorry. So I didn't understand anything. I'm sorry. 
You have to repeat what you said. I didn't understand it. Sure. Um, so we're trying out two things for next for next week's meeting. One is to bring down the time from 10 minutes to five minutes for the elected officials to speak. And then four questions after that. I think the four questions part remains the same as previous meetings. The second thing is that um, if anyone wants to speak during the gallery session, elected official or member of the public, they have to notify the community board 36 hours in advance. Can I say something? Go ahead, yeah. Uh, I understand members of a community because they know the community, they've been around, limiting them to 36 hours in advance sounds fine. Why would we want to shun a politician that might have important information to share uh, to 36 hours instead of the day off? I'm not saying one hour before or two hours before, but that, that day of a meeting, why wouldn't they be welcome to come to our meeting or participate in our meeting? That's no, not I think, make sense I, think me. I think we're talking about reps. Like, I think we're talking no, about reps. No, no, that was not the statement made. Yeah, I think, I think uh, same concern I had, uh, Jeremy, the one Frano just mentioned, if an elected official decides the same day to mention it, but we said that we were going to, uh, Jeremy was going to try to accommodate these exceptions, uh, Frano. Yeah, because I specifically brought the, the example of Charles Schumer. So I, I said it made sense. Yes, but when, when Yahi brought up the thing, it wasn't mentioned uh, about the elected. You said that if elected decided they want to come that day, you you didn't want you wanted notice. I understand it should be for the reps and for the public. And, and <laughs> go ahead, Fran. Well, there, there is a difference when we're talking about the gallery sessions. That's well under control. They have two minutes to speak, and two questions can be asked of them. So the gallery session should not be a problem. It's the elected officials uh, that can actually speak for a half an hour. We've all been there. And then there's a dozen questions afterward that we have to control. And I think that uh, you came up with a perfect solution, notification before a certain amount of time to speak and a certain amount of questions to be asked. And uh, because we have to control that. The gallery session we control already. So, Yahe, do you want to summarize or you want me to try to regurgitate it? Can we, no, I think, I, I think, yeah. can we, one question. Are we making a difference between the reps and the, and the actual elect, and the actual elected officials if they actually come? And can we make a difference? Can we differentiate between uh, among them? So how about, okay, I'm going to put it this way. Uh, let, let me rephrase it. Uh, anyone looking to speak at the gallery session, whether member of the public, elected officials, or their representatives, they should notify the community board 36 hours in advance. If they cannot, exceptions may be made. Um, and we leave it as that because I didn't say they shall, you know, notify us 36. I said they should. And I said, we may allow them to, you know, make those exceptions. If, if Jeremy gets a call from, you know, uh, a senator's office at 5 p.m. and Senator Schumer wants to be in the, in the meeting, then he can make that exception. If, if he's busy and he can't, then we tried. I think, is, is everyone okay with that? I think you run into a problem, Yahe, with, okay, the elected himself, fine, but anybody else, if a, an elected official rep comes to me, something important, not about an elected official, I can always announce it to them. But I think you, I think we run into a problem if we make exceptions for everybody and defeats the purpose of it. Yeah. So, hey, this is John, can you hear me? 
Just yeah. go. So there's two different things here, right? There's elected officials like Vanessa, who are not in our district or doesn't have any purview of our district. That's one. I mean, she's coming as a guest to speak on the topic item. She should give, you know, that, that should be 36 hours. That's fine. But I think limiting uh, officials that represent our area, especially if they're going to bring something productive to our meeting or be able to announce something that's available to constituents, to the board, limiting their time and or kind of saying they can't come or they're, they're not going to get time. I don't think it'd be productive to the board. They can say something. I mean, I've been to several of these meetings now. They come and some people they say, hey, we're going to understand or things are good. They just listen to the complaints and the issues that we have inside our board and see if they can provide some assistance. I don't think it's bad to have them at our meeting, but it's, especially if it's in our district and they govern our district area. So let them be there, right? They don't I mean, I don't think it takes too long and they come, they stay a little bit, fine. But if it's an outside person like Vanessa, let them give you 36 hours and then you can limit the time there and then let the gallery go after that. I, I just think it's, you know, I don't want to miss out on something because the guy forgot to call and uh, 36 hours ago and all of a sudden we missed out on an opportunity that they were going to talk to us about, especially in our district, and they're representing our district. I just don't want to miss out. But are you talking about, did it matter for you, John, between the elected staff and their rep? Because I think that's the distinguish that that's important. But, but I think the information coming is the same, right? I don't think it, I don't, even if Chuck Schumer says it or his rep says it, if we can get some information that's beneficial to our uh, our community, let them come and say it. I, mean, I think there should be like a standing thing for all these elected who represent us, right? I think that list there are all elected that represent our district. Leave it open as a topic item there. They can They should be regulars. Right, just like us as board members. And if anybody from the outside that doesn't govern our particular area want to come in, let them give you 36 hours and we can limit that time. I just think there should be a standing opening for all of our elected officials that that represent our, our community to be able to have the opportunity to speak. And, and it's nice that they're coming to our community board and speaking because they don't have to. Um, and if they're going to come and participate and be part of our community board, I think we should afford them the opportunity too, because they're going to give us, you know, positive information. I mean, I don't think they're here to do anything else. And that's fine. I think that's what we talked about. We'll still make exceptions, but we're just encouraging people to do it 36 hours in advance. Well, so we're not saying if, if they reach out to us the, the day of that, we're going to definitely say no. If we can reduce, if we can get seven out of 10 people to notify us 36 hours in advance and three people notify us the day of, it is what it is. We'll just, you know, try to handle those three that came the day of. But if we can encourage as many as possible to do it 36 hours in advance, why not? No I'm just saying, we're turn them away. no, no, but I'm just saying, you know what, why, why don't we just have a standing slot for them if just in our, in our meetings, if they want us, Bronx Square President's Office. Anybody here? No. Okay, next. You know, council members, Jonai's office. Anybody there? Nope. Next. But we should just have a standing placeholder for them if they're there. So that if they need to say something, they can. We, we, we have, we basically have that. We usually, we usually do that anyway. Okay, great. That's what I'm but, saying. I'm saying don't, don't limit those people, but anybody from the outside is saying, okay, they need 36 hours. Give us an agenda because their, their objective here is, you know, they're coming to our community board meeting. And they're a guest at our community board, as opposed to people who aren't guests, like our elected officials that belong here. But I want I want to make sure everybody understands the current process. These elect these eight highlights, with the exception of the borough president's um, office, seven of these are are confirmed. Okay, you know, that's what I'm asking. Yes, but I'm not sure if you understand what it takes to get this. I have to hound these people for this, and. Who's not here? The mayor's office. So they confirmed the last two meetings. They never showed up. So I don't want, in some ways, why have a placeholder for somebody that doesn't show up? And you don't know who, and you don't necessarily know who's going to show up because, you know, when you had Congressman Crowley here, um, not AOC, you never had any. Well, no, you had you had reps. I'm sorry, you never had the, the elected themselves. Um, yeah, I misspoke on that. But but that's 
this is eight. This is eight people. Yes. Should hopefully be little to no questions. Maybe we can get rid of the comments, especially in the gallery, because sometimes that creates unnecessary back and forth. Yeah, if the procedure is that these eight people have a placeholder and they just need to confirm, but they can always come because they are our elected officials that represent us, great. If anybody outside of that realm needs to give us 36 hour notice, they can be put on the agenda because Vanessa typically wouldn't be here, um, but the rest of them will. Fine. I, and I, I just don't think that I, at any given meeting, I've never seen all of them there. And if we just give them the opportunity to speak, if they're there, if not, keep it moving. And let the gallery speak, and we take it from there. I mean, do we so do we do we limit time for all of these eight people? We do yeah, now. Two. We do now. We, we do. used to not do that. So what do we give them? Generally, it's two minutes. Generally, two it's minutes. two minutes, and in reality, that should go in our bylaws by now because it's been two minutes for a year or more, maybe two years. All right, great. So each of those slots are set aside for two minutes. And we calculate that eight people, that's 16 minutes. If three of them, four of them don't show up, that's only eight minutes out of our lives. Let's just keep moving. I mean, I just think they should have a placeholder there and we just move one from there. Just again, I mean, look how much time we took to do this thing. We could have all, <laughs> you know, it's just, if there's somebody that's outside of this eight people that represent our district, let them put in something in 36 hours in advance so we know that they're there, there's somebody new coming to our, otherwise, Leave two minutes for each of these people. If they come, great. If they don't, that's 16 minutes that we can say was allocated. And if, they don't, if they're not there, we save two minutes per person. Who's yes, going to be chairman? Keeper, though. Is it going to be me or is it going to be Al? So no, no, what, I, what I'm saying is, why would you say borough president's office? It doesn't have to be Tom Lutz. I mean, it could be somebody else. Just give placeholders for each of these entities right or members it doesn't have to be the particular person we can announce it's, it's somebody from here because these are the representatives that represent our district if they're there great if they're not we get back two minutes the max we're going to spend is 16 minutes with eight people so i'm saying leave it there if anything if they're not they don't show up they don't show up and we get two minutes back if they do show up let's hear what they got to say it's got to be the benefits for the community board and we keep it moving. So I, I just think that it doesn't have to be each individual's name. It could just be Representative Ocasio's office. It could be her. It could be anyone. And we call out. Is there anybody there? No? Okay. Next person. We save two minutes. Uh, I, I don't think at any given time all of them will be there at once. So I just think that I need to, we need to give them the opportunity to speak and represent our district. And if they have something, it's productive to our district. And if they don't, we save two minutes. And for anybody like Vanessa or Fernando, you know, they got to let you know 36 hours in advance so you can put them on the agenda. Otherwise, you know, we just have our eight. So I'm getting we've the got to be more. We've got to be more concerned about the time rather than um, who comes and who doesn't come and whether or not there's a slot open for them. We've had people come and speak for a half an hour and answer questions for 15 to 20 minutes. Now that's one person and uh, they have an agenda. Look, a representative will stay within a time frame. And if uh, we don't suggest a time frame, then they can keep going and they will keep going. And uh, we have to have some kind of control over our time. Now, I don't think we're saying that we're gonna extend the time. We're just saying it's two minutes for these slots. Right? If they are here, they get the two minutes. If they're not, we keep it moving. But if it's somebody that's coming from the outside, like Vanessa, Vanessa's got a topic, right? And now we give her five minutes to, to, uh, to talk about her topic or 10 minutes, whatever you guys want to decide. And then there's a, there's a session a back and forth and we limit it to another five minutes of questions and back. Of, and then we tell the public, if you have further questions, please feel free to reach out to Ms. Gibson's, you know, Councilwoman Gibson's office, her information is here in the, the chat area or we can give it out. I don't think we should you know, stop members of the public from asking questions or anything, but we can only ask so many questions, five minutes worth, and then give the information to the, to the councilwoman and how to get to her office if they have further questions. Yeah, but we have to be okay, so politely, have to politely 
sort of uh, suggest to them a certain time. Vanessa, you mentioned Vanessa. The last time she was here, she spoke for half an hour. And then we had questions that uh, last 15 or 20 minutes. So Vanessa can do that. Vanessa would example. definitely do that. Okay, I don't want this to, to, to drag on to, for too long. Can we, okay. uh, let's just keep it simple, Jeremy. I'll make the announcement next, next uh, during next week's meeting that uh, about the 36 hours, um, we already have basically a, a placeholder for those elected officials anyway, regardless. I know you said sometimes you have to get it out of them, but uh, well, let's, I, let's I, I, try. I did it right here, all right here. These are all 13 of these. These are the ones we could expect, maybe. Some of them I don't expect at all, but I put it there. 13 of them. And that's there fine. Go. Let, let, let's go with that. Let's go with that. Anyone, anyone else that doesn't represent our district, any members of the public, they would have to notify us 36 hours in advance. Ex with exceptions, we can make exceptions. So we'll, yep. we'll go with that. That sounds good. Andrea, did you want to say something? I was cutting you off. No, I, I just had a foolish, I guess a foolish question. Who is Council Member Riley? That's a name that I'm not familiar with. Andy King's uh, successor. successor. Thank you. And, and we don't have one for Rich to see yet. Jared, uh, you uh, have Biagi there twice. Is there a reason? I do not. I have Biagi and Bailey. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. That's Bailey. I'm sorry. You're right. And and if anybody wants to know the order, because there have been questions in the past. Borough President's Office appoints all of us, all, or all the board members, not all of us. Um, with half of them are in the council member nominees, so that's why these people pre preferential treatment. And we are a city agency, so it's mayor's office at the top, on down. Then, I would say federal office, just down to state. That's why it's done that way, for anybody who wants to know. Yeah, that's fine. We, we, it's okay with, with how we have it now. I don't think we have any issues. Uh, if we run into issues, then we'll just go by population, how many people they represent. And well, then we'll just I'm do it sorry. in that order. Sorry, I forgot to announce that too. That's why, so Joe and I represents our district more than Riley. Aji represents us more than Bailey. That's why it's done Aji over Bailey and Joe and I over Riley. All right, scroll down, Jeremy. We haven't even gotten to the calendar yet. Okay. That's, that's it. Um, All business, new business. Okay. Kind of statement. All right. Is everybody okay with uh, the agenda? <laughs> Do we vote? Do we have to vote on it, Jeremy, or can you can just move on to the well, next? Well, I think I think you should vote on the five minutes. So the the agenda, I I will I will put it in there. I will word it in here. About five minutes for elected the principal elected. Um, and then I will send out an email about the thirty six hour notice. But we're keeping the two minutes and four questions or comments, right? Yes. So, so, so the changes, the unusual changes, I think you should vote on. So, five minutes for elected themselves and a six hour notice. This All right. So, I call uh, the, the ability for exception. All right. So, I'm calling for a motion to uh, allow elected officials to speak up to five minutes. Um, instead of the 10 minutes that we have now. Um, do I have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Andrew. Yep. Anyone uh, abstaining? Anyone against? Yeah, Frank was against. All right, noted. Frank was voting against. Um, I guess then it passes. Um, can I make one suggestion? Um, sure. Instead of instead of saying you have five minutes to speak, I would suggest speaking time um, 
uh, uh, preferably uh, within uh, suggested speaking time of five minutes. This is suggested speaking time of five minutes. And this will be, it softens the blow. Um, I don't. I don't think it, it, we need to soften anything. Once you soften it, like you said, Vanessa can come and speak for a half hour. Then she says, well, it was only a suggestion. Uh, I don't think people look at it that way. <laughs> yeah, but Frano, Frano's also, uh, people are kind of in the habit now of Frano timing them. I don't think that they will take offense. Uh, you could change it. I, I see what um, Joe's saying. Maybe we, re we, re we, we kindly request that you keep your speaking time under five minutes, right? That sounds a lot better than you got to, you know, we kindly request yeah. you keep your speaking time below five minutes or at five minutes, whatever, within five minutes. And honestly, with some elected officials, that, that'll never, that'll never, that doesn't mean anything. You know, if we have it timed, as long as it's timed and uh, someone rings the bell and says, up, oh, five minutes are up. So what happens after that? What what happens to the suggestion? So we just they just continue. I mean, I can tell you, like, I interrupted Gustavo earlier this year, and I spoke to him after it, and he didn't seem to take offense to it. He, and I and I didn't do it personally. Against you know, it wasn't it wasn't personal. I don't know. These are public speakers. They know exactly what it means. Um, we don't have to hold their hands, but we don't have to hit them over the head either. Uh, we put down a suggested time of five minutes to speak. They know that that means five minutes. Stop, mark that. <laughs> the S is coming, Fernando's coming, whoever's coming. When they do call to put their name on the list, you just say, hey, just to let you know, you got five minutes, you know, and and soften it there and say, okay, and over here, we request you stay within five minutes. Uh, and when they do call, make them very well aware, email or whatever it is, you know, a, official, a, the elected official's time is limited to five minutes. Please stay within that perimeter. They, they will have no problem complying. Again, other, other... I, I don't think so either. I, I, I think they will have no com problem complying. They will. I mean. You know, they know it's five minutes and, you know, maybe a, a quick text of the next though, if you're going over, hey, you're going over five or, or whatever, and somebody can keep it there. But I just, I agree with Joe. I don't think it's, you know, I think elected officials are pretty, they, they know when to stop. And if they don't, we can kind of nudge it at that point. Yeah. You know, a lot yeah. of elected officials will even ask you, how much time do I have? I know uh, Senator Klein used to ask that question all the time. How much time do I have? But he, he some sometimes they're the exception, Joe. So regardless, you guys already voted on it, right? Frano was the only one yeah, against. It. Fine. Okay. So so yeah, hey, did you want to talk? Did you want to talk about thirty six hours? Did you want to vote on that? Three. So I'll make an emotion. I'll make a motion to request um, that members of the public, elected officials who do not represent our di our district, should make a request 36 hours prior to the meeting in order to be included in the gallery session, with limited exceptions to be made. Do I have a second? I second that. It's John. Thank you, John. Any abstentions? Anyone against? Oh. Hello? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, you just revised the original statement that you had said. Now you're saying only for the public and non representatives. That are not direct representative to the board. Am I correct on that? Yeah, because I, I, after John suggested that we just have a placeholders for those people that represent us, and they're going to get announced anyways. You know, does anyone have anything from the mayor's office? Uh, so they're going to get called out uh, anyway. Okay. Okay. Then I'm I'm for it. 
All right, then uh, motion passes unanimously. Thank you. All right, did we find the minutes from last month? Is all. Let me try to do a quick search as well. Can you pull um, up the calendar yeah, I, while I do the search? I don't have access to my um, okay. my work. So I was trying to get access, but it's not working. But and I can't find it on my phone. But I I'm I'm ninety nine point nine percent sure I sent them out. We we, we can get back to it. I mean. We don't have a choice at this point. So. Okay, you want to pull up the calendar? Oh, who's having a meeting and how are we having a meeting? Who's here tonight? Transportation? Frano? I'm okay with the first. And that will be my last okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, no, Fran has an agenda. I believe he has a DOT coming. Education is not here tonight, to my knowledge. Uh, Parks is not here, to my knowledge. Hazel, you're here. Housing. I'm here. You want to have a meeting? Uh, you know, I'm so tired of having meetings where I'm like the only person there, and sometimes it's just me and Pat. Um, but I'm going to try and have a meeting. Yes. Do you have an agenda? No, I don't. So can we not schedule it until you have one? Sure. Okay. That's usually that's that's best practice currently. Well, that's usually how I work anyway. Okay. So I will take this off till till notified. Uh, Joe Big Coat, I don't know if he's able to unmute himself. Let me let me get a Go to him to try to unmute him. I sent a request for him to unmute himself. Yo, Bay is here. Hey, Joe. Hey. Yeah. You want to have a meeting on the 9th of March? No. Okay. I will put you take you off. Thank you. Um, it's star six to mute or unmute. Signorelli's not here, but I'm just taking them off. Take I'm going to take every anybody off until I hear from them. Public safety, uh, Veronica. We asked the four night people to be at our next meeting again, so I'll get you an agenda with them on it. And if there's any changes or additions to that, I'll let you know. Okay, uh, John Johnson, ethics. Yes, keep it on. Okay, and Joe Johnson. Yeah, we're gonna meet. Okay, executive board, leadership, fine, yeah, hey. Yep. Full board, hopefully there's no, um, there's no conflict on the 25th. Did you check the Jewish calendar and other calendars? No, I have to check. In fact, I have to check that for that whole month. I haven't done that yet. No, the Jewish holiday doesn't yeah. start until mm -hmm. later. So Passover is Saturday, Sunday, morning, Sunday and Monday. So, Saturday, whatever. No, 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 no. The 27th or 28th starts. Jerome's the next day. And if he's going to be using office week, that's when they're on here. The NCOA uh, build a block. So 
Unless there's any other changes to the calendar, that should be it, right? Yeah, it looks good. I'll, I'll check alternate side. In the meantime, yeah, if you want to call on the public, or, or is that it? Or is that, is that, that, should, that should be it for the agenda, right? Yeah, that should things. be it. And also, uh, for Hazel, I know you haven't been, you didn't get a uh, quorum for this month's meeting. Uh, I'm hoping once um, everyone starts seeing that we're sending letters of warning and we're taking the attendance seriously, that things will change going forward. We can only hope. We'll see what happens. Uh, with that being said, let me go back to the agenda. Um, I, you know, thank you for saying that because um, um, of all the meetings that I've had, I think I only had one meeting where I did have a quorum. So we do see. Yeah, and that's yeah. not that's not good. Yeah, hey. Yeah, Andrea. Is that letter also going to pertain to um, the full board and leadership committee meeting? It's committee meeting and uh, full board meetings. Uh, Jeremy has the attendance uh, record, and right now we're looking at, I think, it's three consecutive meetings missed at the general meeting and five total, whether excused or unexcused. And committee meetings, I think it's also five. Am I correct, Jeremy? I'm sorry, I am I was just checking the, can everybody mute themselves? He's not talking. So I just checked the alternate side calendar. First of all, it's only Passover. And as somebody already said, it's not on, it's not, it's on a weekend or not a day. It's towards the end of the month of March. So there are no other holidays on on that we need to have on our calendar. Um, in terms of attendance that we're looking at, currently at full board, we are going to get to committee. I think is, that was the question. Um, we did talk about this at executive board. No, my question was the letters that is going to go out. I understand it's going to pertain to committee meetings. What about chairman heads that don't show up for the leadership? meetings or don't or don't come to full board meetings no that their attendance is, their attendance does count against them if they don't show up to um, leadership community meetings so i unless i unless anybody knows what would happen what's going on with diane norris or um pat charles or tony signorelli they're marked absent for tonight unless unless i get a good excuse otherwise and that counts against them. My next question is how many good excuses are they allowed to have? Uh, anybody? Just the chairs or anybody? Well, how can you differentiate? We don't. What's, good for, what's good for me has to be good for somebody else. Oh, that's, Andrea, that's, why, that's, why, that's why we would vote on it, Andrea. And if that excuse is not good enough for you, then you vote for their removal. But if uh, I think their excuse is legitimate, then I might vote, you know, against their removal. So I think that's what it really comes down to. My question was like, I'll just give Diane Norris for an example. I have no idea what her problem is. She's ill, okay? You're going to take her illness every month. Is that going to be allowed? Uh, I don't know that she's ill. We're just, I'm just playing devil's advocate here. Well, we have, we have, sorry, can you hear? You got a lot of feedback. So we have, um, we have somebody that hasn't come to a meeting since 2019 who's been marked excused. They didn't even realize that they're still on the board. I spoke to them Monday night. So what I said at leadership is you have, if you have a relationship with any of these people, and you want to reach out to them and get a resignation letter from them, from them that would be amazing because that's one thing that uh, council member Joe and I did last week for one of our members. That's basically what I did, did or I'm doing this week. I got one board member said they will send in a resignation letter. So uh, there was somebody who hasn't come to a meeting since 2019 who has legitimate excuses. Does that answer your question, Andrea? 
It answers my question, but I don't like the answer. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, we are. I already sent out two notices, so I will be doing more. The problem, the other thing we talked about, the leadership was uh, legally restricted to only sending certified mail. Even though I sent emails, and I send, I will send emails because there's no restriction on emails, but it doesn't legally count. For removal. Anything else, Yahe? Yes. Uh, Joe Bacot? Yes, Joe Bacot here. Hey, Joe. Yes, my question is why well, can't we have the sexual harassment prevention session at the office? Um, um, the system on the day when someone is there, and we can watch the program. We could, we could, we could, we could talk about that. We can work that out. Probably. Okay. Anyone else? Thank you. That's it. Thank you. Anything pertaining to. We on what are we on? Calendar still? Okay. Yeah, so we have until we'll March eighteenth to do that. Yeah. And my second question. My second question. Hello. That's your call. Oh. Go ahead. I never get the information to get on board to the meeting. I always have to call someone to get it. No one sends that information to me for the leadership committee meeting. No one. They call and tell me what time we're having a meeting, but never give me the information to get on. So. As we've discussed in the past, I have checked and you have received invites. So it's I, have, I have a computer and no one sends me an email. I mean, I I can if you want, I can bring it up. I mean, I I can't bring it up because it shows other people's emails. But I have looked for for this week. I can check with Chris um, and see. I can check with Chris to see if it was sent to you. But I know. In the past, when I've clearly sent it to you, I had Chris send it again. I um, never get it. I told it to Al that I don't receive it. And how I got on tonight, I got the information from Sandy. Hey, uh, Joe, that I will be in the dark. Joe, I'm, so, I'm showing an email that was sent at 1158 this morning. You were on the email. Did you get that email, 1158 this morning? No, did not. Okay, maybe they have the wrong email address for you, but uh, I'm showing you listed on my the email. E my email address has been the same since, uh, what, since 2000. It had to be hey, hey, Joe, it's final. Why don't you check your junk mail? Maybe it's going to your junk mail. No, I don't have to check anything, Freno. I don't get it. I don't see the email, Yahe, but if you forge and verify if it's the correct email or not. And I'm sick of asking someone for the information to get on board to the meeting. They call and tell me the meeting is going to be what time and what night, but never give me the information to get on. Yeah, the, I always the, have to email search was, for it, ask yeah, someone email, to give me that information. Jeremy, I also mentioned the same thing to you. In the past, you would send us the day or the day before or a couple of days before the agenda. And on the agenda, it had um, how to get on. Now we have to go on to the website to find it. So he's correct. No, oh, he's not correct because I can, can you hear I mean, I'm pretty sure I sent out the agenda for this meeting uh, last Friday or something like that. I'm pretty sure I sent out 
the agenda, which you could click on. Well, then I never received it either. I had to go on to the, your, the website to get the information, and then Chris sent it again today. But in the past, you had sent for the leadership, for the full board, the agenda with the information on the top to get on to the meeting. So it, it does make it a little difficult when people can't navigate so well to get onto the website. Okay, so for this past month, this past meeting, or this, for this week, I did say, yes, I did uh, um, supply the link, to go to the website. But that you're saying that's a problem? Yes, I personal I personally liked it when you sent the you you emailed the agenda and on the agenda was the information. But that's me personally. I found it easier than having to go to the website and doing it that way. That's why last week I had trouble getting on to my own committee meeting because I couldn't I couldn't find it. Okay, but the reason I try to refer people to the website is because you don't need to rely on me generally or a person you know who could be sick one day who could be, jeremy you know. i understand but you also have to understand that some of us are technically challenged we're not all as sophisticated as you are when it comes to a computer so you have to bear in mind for the rest of us and i do Amen. Say go ahead why don't you just send it out way you used to send it out to everyone and that's it and uh, there's no more discussion for that oh so you got to remember what's the way i used to send it out the way i used to send out when we met in person are we talking about remote meetings we're talking about office suite we're talking about webex because the problem is there's constantly a change every month basically it seems like and it's and it's you know, no, but basically it's, it's you, you, would send a, you would just send an email and put the information in the email. That's it. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I did send an email on Saturday at 11.02 a.m. Um, with the information or at least where you could get the information. Um, but you want, you want the actual invite or you want the actual phone number readily supplied for you. Correct. The phone number and the ID to get on to whoever we, we're using, whatever system we're using. Right. All right. I will. I will. Have, I will have Harry and Chris do that then. Um, but I can tell you, for some people who said they don't get the emails, they have gotten this stuff in the past. Well, I don't get it. I'll tell you that. Okay. Well, I, I'm looking at your email right now, and I, you got the email. On Saturday, at least. You must have the wrong email address. Well, we just go forward and uh, let the past be in the past. Let's just go forward and make sure it gets out to everybody on an email. So it's nice and easy and simple and forget the past. Okay. But yeah, yeah, you sent me and you forwarded me that email. That is correct. Thank you. Jeremy. Yep. Well, okay. I didn't hear from Frank. Yeah, hi. Yeah, Jeremy. I, I'm sorry. I said, can you confirm with Joe his email so, like this, their corrections could be made? Like this, he doesn't have the issue. I mean, I just confirmed with the email Yahe sent. Um, I will confirm with him privately because I don't want to read it out loud because it should not give out his email publicly. Exactly, privately. Yep. But in the meantime, as long as I've been a district manager for 10 years, it's correct. So, All right. Yeah, well, yeah let's, let's move on to uh, the gallery session. Um, do we have anyone from the gallery session that would like to speak? Any members of the public? Hi, this is Diana Finch. Can you hear me? Yes, hi. Go ahead. Hi. Um, I just wanted to ask if you could go over what you decided about the gallery at the full 
monthly meetings? They, sh they should notify the public 36 hours in advance if they would like to speak at the gallery session. Okay, because my question about that is, when is the agenda for the meeting sent? Because the last meeting, I think I recall that I didn't receive, I received several versions of the agenda. And I think the morning of the meeting, there was a final agenda that included items that hadn't been on the previous agendas. Yeah, that's, that's what we're the trying to avoid. Gallery signups should be timed to when the agendas are sent out. Then it would be a week in advance, which is too much, because we're, we're we're voting on we're basically approving the agenda tonight, and it's not the final version because we're going to have some changes uh, with members of the public signing up to speak at the gallery session. If we did that, then we would have to make the cutoff point a week in advance, and that's too much. But see. My question is then if you add items to the agenda and then someone sees an added item that they want to say something about and they didn't know it was going to be included on the agenda in time to ask to be in the gallery. I don't understand why the gallery is being so restricted. Because yeah, I thought that, that you could speak in the gallery about whatever you wanted to speak about. and. If two or three people want to both, you know, all talk about the same topic, well, that's the topic of the day. Well, just so remember, the city prohibits electioneering, uh, right? For no, I government that. purposes, so right. that is prohibited outright, and we also put in our conduct statement that it is prohibited. So right. the idea is that. So again, I got like four or five requests the day of the meeting last time and um i want to i want to we need to limit that it's not fair to it's not fair to frankly everyone and so because there's often a back and forth with some of this stuff that's why 36 hours is helpful or can be helpful that's correct with uh, what jeremy said in the days when you had in-person meetings, people didn't have to sign up 36 hours in advance to speak in the gallery. They just signed up when they arrived at the meeting. That that was then, That this is now. And like well, I said, if you look at other community oh. boards, they're much more restrictive. Well, maybe they, should, much... maybe they shouldn't be more restrictive. I don't know that it's right to be so restrictive about the gallery is my basic point. Well, we're really not being restrictive. Or I mean, we're, we're offering- uh, an Opportunity to express their opinions and concerns. That's what it says in the city charter. But I just don't, I don't understand why all of a sudden there's such a restrictive attitude towards the gallery. So, and I don't. Uh, I just want to clarify. So you're getting to the Can I clarify something? Thirty-six hours or whatever it is. So uh, I'm trying to get your concern uh, clarified. So you're saying it's too restrictive that thirty-six hours is is too restrictive, but you want to see the final dra uh, the final agenda. Before then, like those two things don't I add up. The so gallery sign up should mesh with the announcement of the agenda, so that if well, it's going to be thirty six hours, then the agenda has to be set thirty six so hours. Part, you can't add new items to the agenda. So, so to clarify, to help to help clarify one one gallery. of the new problems. So yeah, one of the new problems that we've had is that the city has taken away. My ability, every community board throughout the city who has a New York City.gov website, the city has taken away our ability to make direct uh, edits. Depends on the edit, but oh, in this case, that's right. I mean, sometimes I mean Hazel can tell you. I think it was I think it was full board minutes. She, she and I worked took care of it. 
I submitted it the Friday before the full board meeting, so almost a week. The city never published it. And so so came the meeting and I, I felt stupid. I was like, what happened? It's like, because I did everything right, what, with the exception of following up to make sure the city did it. And I had it, I, and you know, they, they apologized or whatever, but at that point it was too late. I'd like to point out, Diana, that um, one second. Uh, that the 36 hours, there there is a room for there to be exceptions made if somebody comes in later that wants to speak about an important issue. Um, at least that's my understanding from what we were talking about before. So although there's a 36 hour window that we ask you to sign up before, if something comes up that you really want to speak about, you can reach out to Jeremy and an exception can be made. Am I correct, Yahe? That's correct. And also, Diana, worst comes to worst, you, you ask for time to speak 36 hours in advance. And when they call your name, you just say, I'm sorry, there's nothing I want to speak about. This way, you know, you're on the list. Right. And then, it, then it's your, then it's your option, whether you want to speak or not. This way it covers all your bases. Okay, so maybe when you send out the next agenda, if you can add a line saying, um, if you wish to speak in the gallery, please submit your request 36 hours before the meeting. Yeah, the, sure. only, the only thing that brings up too, though, as, as you and I have talked about, so one of the issues that came up last month was a, a bar or establishment, which you yourself want to speak about in four or five yes, minutes. Jeremy, I don't think it was right for you to prevent me from speaking. I'm not happy about that. Yes, no, I understand. I, but if you can let me finish, but everybody if you can let me finish. Sure. If you can finish. Um, so historically, if there's one more more than one speaker on a topic, we try we ask that they be grouped together. In this case, the owner of the establishment spoke, and I think for the most part, everybody um, thought that was good enough. Um, I don't think there was. In my opinion, there's really anybody better to speak about that topic than the owner of the, so so to speak, topic. But Jeremy, that is just your opinion. You don't have the right to censor what the public wants to say. The public so, could say anything about. No, anything. no, no. Remember, first of all, remember you can Jeremy, not listen here you at all on this. I think that you censored me and you prevented me from speaking. And I didn't know when I was supposed to ask to be able to speak. And this is this is why we're doing the 36 hours, right? This is why we're trying to streamline it. We're trying to right for you to say to interrogate people in advance what they're going to speak about and then make unilaterally a decision as to who gets to speak and who doesn't. But we've always done this, whether you realize that or not. We always, we always, we always screen. I mean, again, there are certain things outright you can't speak about. Yes, certain I things, realize I mean, that. I understand. But and, if there's and, that people, several people have different opinions on and different experiences with and different takes on, I think, mm -hmm. I don't think it's right to just choose one over the others. I think you wanted to make the issue go away, <laughs> and therefore you just didn't want to hear what I had to say. I mean, if that were true, I wouldn't have. I, I wouldn't mean, have. That's the feeling I got from the way it was handled. But if that were true, I probably would have said no to the owner of the establishment, right? I mean, I knew exactly what she was going to talk about. Did, did I feel it was my right to prohibit her? I mean, she's the she was the owner of the establishment. You knew, but maybe not everyone else knew. Who is okay? So the, going forward, I don't. I don't. Okay, uh, we don't have much time. We're we're over an hour and a half already. So, we we have procedures. We voted on them. We're going to move forward with that. Um, thank you, uh, okay, Diana. We're on the thirty-six hours, in. and I'm not the one who brought up my speaking at the last meeting. Okay, point uh, point taken. So uh, we'll move on. Uh, any other members of the public that would like to say something? Yes, um, Yahe, I would like to say something very short. Um, yes, go ahead. Just, just because a community board does something, another community board does, does something, doesn't mean it's the right way of doing it. 
if if the committee board then wants to know how to make the meetings uh, in accordance with the laws or bylaws or city charter, they should contact Tom Lucania because first it cannot restrict um uh the public value based on topic. If it's the same topic, we all have like Diane said, we all have our different opinions and takes on that on that same topic. Second, I really you on the agenda, you don't have to put the public speakers. Um so if you're saying that we need this because we need to uh, submit the agenda to the city to publish it. You don't have, you just have to put public gallery session. You don't need to have the names listed because like some people may not show up. Some people may change their mind. You could put that should be posted in the minutes who in the public gallery spoken and what they spoke about. Um, regarding the 36 hours, I really feel that's restricted because let's say for example, something happens uh, 24 hours before the meetings uh, and the community is concerned about it. We hear about something like homeless, anything, and we, we run to the community board to, to uh, relay our concerns or our, our opinion on that. So, so I think restriction is not good because um, it kind of tells the public that they don't, they're not really welcome. This committee board is meant for public engagement to see what the, to go to gauge the public opinions and from going forward to relate that to our, our electeds and the powers that be. I also like to say that the January full board meeting is not public because I went to check because I went to check the attendance records for the January meeting, but I could not because it's not published on the website. So I made an email request, not a full request because it's not under full. It's something that should be done by email only, not full. And also I'd like to say, um, again, I really think that uh, that that going forward, if the community board line wants to do something, they should reach out to Tom Lucanius because they have lawyers to, to advise you what should and cannot be done by a community board based on ch city charter, based on open meetings law, based on FOIL. Instead of looking at, well, this community board eight does this because because they may not be doing things correctly, but no one complained about it yet. Because honestly, they cannot restrict the number of pe public speakers. They can restrict time, but it's not fair to pick and choose who can speak. It should be open to the public. That's why it's called open meeting. I can understand the restriction on electioneering and that's always, that's, that's, a non, that's a, always, uh, but most people from public are not going to electioneer. They're going there to address their concerns. So, and I think it's not fair because the electors get, well, now they're getting five minutes, but they were getting 10 minutes. You get about eight, that's already 80 minutes. Plus questions that it could extend to over almost two hours. So it's not the public gallery session that's taking the time with the community board. It's actually the electors. So I think to restrict the uh, public gallery is not fair because the community board, it's not, it's, Disempowering the public, but they're also weakening their own their own self because when you don't have public engagement, then people say, "Well, this committee board it's it's not a committee board because they have no public support." You want more people to engage because the more people involved, the more powerful the committee board is as an entity. Anyhow, that's my opinion. Thank you. Okay. Uh, hey, points, yeah. Hey, points, points taken. I'll just say something, uh, Jeremy, before you go. Yeah, uh, no, we're not really restricting. The, the intention is not to restrict the public. I want you to know that. We, what we our, our intention by the 36 hours is to limit, not even eliminate requests within 36 hours. We know it's not gonna happen. And yeah, if something comes up even the day of that's urgent, like you said, a shelter or something you know, huge, we, we didn't say that we will not we, we just, we're, we're trying to limit it and we're trying to encourage folks. If you know there's something that you really wanna speak about, give us that 36 hours. If you can't, then we're not saying that we're gonna completely ignore it. We, we will make exceptions, but we're, we're trying to encourage it and go into that habit of doing it that way. So that's uh, number one. Number two, with the link being broken, Jeremy, uh, Ms. Delgado did send an email. I did go to the link and the link is broken for the minutes, uh, the, the general board meeting that we had last yeah, month. The link is broken. Can you, can you check with the city and see what's going on with the link? Yeah, the, the link is not up because it doesn't have to be up right now. You guys haven't voted on them yet. We generally put them up. Maybe we've spoiled people by putting them up earlier, much earlier than they need to be legally. But that's why they're not up right now. It's because we, we've been having a lot of other issues to go. But she, she wants the minutes currently, the draft form. She, anybody's entitled to it, like two, after two weeks from the meeting. Uh, but Mr. Press wanted to speak in the gallery. He said that in the chat a while ago, and I, I just now see that. Yes, Jeremy, as, as far as the gallery session goes, how much time is given to the gallery session? Two minutes of speaker. 
How much total time? Un un uninterrupted. And then there can be four unlimited questions, responses to questions or comments thereafter. Is it 15 minutes? Is it 20 minutes? Is it a half hour dedicated to the gallery session? If we have 10, 10 gallery session speakers, it's two times five, so or 10, so 20 minutes. Fine. I will agree with the previous speaker. The topics and names do not have to be listed. You just list gallery session. When it comes, you keep a list of who wants to speak and what topic they're speaking on. When you see more, say, two or three people are speaking on the same topic, that's when you can limit it. Because we on board eight, when I was on board eight, had a very big issue with the Putnam Trail. And we had sometimes 10 people speaking on one side and 10 on the other, and they were limited to just two or three people speaking on each side. And they were told that. Uh, well, yeah, the, pro the problem is with, with the current format, it's much harder to do. It's easier to do that in person. Current format is much more, like, for example, you know, you, you put, what, 723, you said you want to speak in the gallery. I'm just now seeing that, right, unfortunately. So, you know, there should be some type of streamlined process is what I'm getting, what we're getting at. Like you said, board eight, you know, which I brought before, five minutes, five speakers a night, right? Is that what they do? No, we had, we had elected officials. We didn't let them speak. They had to go into the gallery session to speak. The there reps, you go. The reps. I, the I, want, I, want, I wanted to say that, Bob, but I didn't. My recollection wasn't clear, but I, I do recall when at least Nicole was the DM and I went to one of your meetings that they threw the electeds in the gallery and they had five. So it's like a free for all five speakers only, right? It, it, was, the, it was the representatives, Assembly and Dinowitz Councilman, Cohen Councilman, Cohen, the, the electeds only spoke. It was their okay. rep, they were there. So the, gal so the gallery at Board 8 was limited to five speakers for the public or their representatives? Correct. Okay. All right. Uh, and they were given three minutes each. So it was 15. That's why I asked you the time limit, because it was given 15 minutes for the gallery session. <laughs> if board members want to ask questions, that did not count into the time. That's why I'm saying that. Uh, and like I said, you need to keep, I'm sure you keep a list of names. You don't have to publish who's speaking. You don't have to publish what their topics are. As the meeting comes, we have eight speakers who want, you know, or we have five speakers. That's what, you, you know, much like you did at the live meetings. That's the way it could be. Okay. And, uh -huh. and I think, again, 36 hours is too much. It should be 48 hours. And I know when you have to get the agendas out by, too, because we had to do it, too. We had our executive board meeting a week before. Uh, we called it not leadership, but it was the executive board meeting where the officers and the committee chairs met. That's when the, got, when the agendas were really hashed out, finalized, and sent out a week before. Okay, I'm just letting you know what board eight did. All right, thank you. I appreciate it, Bob. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, that's why we didn't put anything in the bylaws yet. We're just testing it out. We're going to test the five minutes. We're going to test the 36 hours. We'll see where we go with it. If it, it works out, that's great. If it doesn't, then we don't do it. We don't have to take everything from Community Board 8, like Ms. Delgado says. We, we can do, take the good, we, the things that benefit the community, the things that don't benefit, we don't see any benefit to it, we won't take it. So um, that's pretty much uh, my response. Uh, right. One last thing, Gahe, I forgot to say. You have 12 different community boards doing 12 different things. And you ask Tom Lucania, he'll say what's in the bylaws. Because 12 different community boards have 12 different bylaws. When I mentioned to a certain person from the borough president's office when I first got on community board eight that I was told don't give us extra work as far as you know making the uniform bylaws. Okay? So you have 12 different boards with 12 different bylaws, okay? Just to let you know. Yeah, I know there's pros and cons to things like that, but um, you want to be as flexible as, as possible to for each community, not each community is the same, same. which is good okay. that, it's, you know, that you have some differences, but to have inconsistencies that 
hurt the community, then I agree with you, then uh, we should work on it. But every community board should try their best to be, to set a standard. I mean, I, I think what we did with the ethics committee, we're setting a standard, honestly. Uh, with with other things that we've we've been doing, we we took the 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 conduct statement from I think community board ten, and we we made it so much better. So we set a, a new standard, and if we continue to do that and compete to be the best and to serve the community, I think um, I, I think it will benefit the community as a whole. And when I do call Tom, he'll say, well. Look at what this community board did, and I'm like, oh, good idea. Let me do that, and then I'll, he'll say, look at what this community board did, and I'll look at their what they did. So there's good and bad with everything. You're not going to find a perfect system, especially with the government. Okay. Uh, this, no, you're right. This board is trying its best. Thank you. And then you do have one other member of the public, is Debbie Collick. She's not a member of the committee. All right, that's it for, that's uh, it for the public. All right, Debbie, do you have anything? Yes. Oh, no, one thing. Right. What? Sorry, I just missed uh, one thing. Uh, Ms. Delgado, I know you said that we're limiting the, the, the public to only two minutes, and I understand your concern. Yeah, two minutes is not enough, but since we're, we're working to have a, an efficient meeting, we usually don't limit um, committee meetings. So if you're really passionate about a subject that has to do with housing, attend the housing committee. Um, just like you, you, you attended the ethics committee. I mean, you probably had about, I don't know, five, 10 minutes, 15 minutes to speak. We won't limit you. We won't, sh you know, it's not as limited. So you'll have a little bit more time to speak and you will hear you. Your, your, what you say will be on, uh, should be in the minutes. Um, and that, that's I, I wanted to state that uh, I wanted to get back to everything that you said, but I, I think that was the point that I was missing. Sorry, Debbie, do you have anything? Oh, thank. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, thank you for that. I appreciate that. And I'm going for perhaps I will go to sometimes time is strict, strict, but I would like to say that the open meetings law dictates how meetings are done when they're done for the public. So because one committee board eight might be doing and they might be not a hearing and they might be actually violating it and they they're doing it because no one complained about it. So I would really ask you to. Confirm with Tom McCain, it's law, they have lawyers. They have to make sure that the all committee boards are when there's a complaint. There's never, there's nothing that's ever done until someone makes a complaint. You know that. So when someone makes a complaint, they have to look at it and say, are they in violation of the state laws, of the city's charter laws? And they are actually, because you cannot limit public speak, speakers. That I do know for a fact, but thank you for your time. Okay, thank you. I didn't know my voice changed there. <laughs> um, well, I know, like, if I, I know historically, if I wanted to bring something to the board, I brought, I brought it. You know, if, if you need to speak about something that's not on the agenda or is on the agenda, give you 36 hours. So I totally agree with giving the 36 hours. And as far as if there's five, six, seven, eight people that are going to talk on, on the same subject, I know historically they have been grouped together. So that's not actually something new. Okay, so that's the end of the public, Yahe? Yep. Okay, old, old business? Any old business, any new business? Me. Motion, please. Fran, have you had something? Yeah, no. motion to adjourn. <laughs> I second that. All right. So, uh, thank you, everyone, for uh, this uh, really good meeting that we had tonight. We'll talk to everybody uh, again. Remember, next uh, Wednesday, next Wednesday night. Stay safe, everybody. Second the adjournment. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Uh, just say the meeting at eight forty-five, Hazel. You can just Job say that. Second it. Uh, it's Ken Galman. Okay, but... Oh, Hi. I'm sorry. Sorry, I did. Uh, according to the BP's office, we don't need that, right, Yahe? Meeting's over. Yeah, we okay. don't need a, a vote to adjourn a committee meeting. Okay. okay. Good night.
I did it. Have a good night, everybody. Take care. So 845, Hazel, 845. Oh, good night. Ciao. Oh. Diana Finch Thanks. has left the meeting. All right, I'm I'm closing the chat. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs>